It's time for questions to the Minister for Regional Development. We'll start with the listed questions, and I call Mr. William Irwin. Question number one, Mr. Deputy Principal Speaker. Deputy Principal uh, Speaker, at the outset, could I express uh, my gratitude too, uh, to the Speaker and his office and to my ministerial uh, colleague, uh, the DSD Minister Mervyn Storey, for uh, swapping uh, oral questions today because of personal family circumstances. Thank you very much indeed. Mr. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, my department's policy and procedures in relation to weed control are aimed at uh, ensuring the safety of road users to prevent the deterioration of the road pavement and to meet its statutory obligations to control noxious weeds so that they do not spread to adjoining farmland. However, as members will be aware, my department is facing a very significant £60 million resource budget pressure in 2015-16, more than half of which has fallen to Transport NI. Due to these pressures, uh, my department is only able to provide a skeleton routine maintenance service at the present time at some financial risk to my department. As a consequence, weed control is one of the areas affected. Although my internal workforce has limited capacity to carry out chemical weed control, it will endeavour to undertake this type of treatment to ensure the Department meets its, meets its legislative requirement in relation to noxious weeds. This is not the service that my Department wishes to provide. However, it is a direct consequence of the current very challenging budgetary position. Uh, I have bid uh, for June monitoring uh, for additional resources in June monitoring to restore routine maintenance activities to normal levels, and I hope that the member and the House will robustly support my department's bid. Supplementary. Thank you. Um, I thank the minister for his response. Would the minister accept, uh, given that farmers are, can be fined uh, under cost compliance for having an obnoxious weeds on the ground, that? It should be a priority for him and uh, his department to ensure that obnoxious weeds uh, do not uh, seed and spread over the farmer's land. I'm grateful to the uh, member for his uh, supplementary. Let me uh, reassure him and indeed the entire House that uh, uh, this is not a situation that, uh, we, uh, that we want to be in, and every care and consideration will be given to ensuring that, um, that there is no impact on, on uh, farmland or uh, farmers' uh, uh, property. Uh, we work closely um, with uh, local section offices, work very closely with farmers uh, in the area. Um, we are not aware of any widespread difficulty with this, but of course, um, if, if there are issues that, that uh, farmers or landowners wish to discuss with my, official, uh, with my officials at section office level, very happy. Uh, to do so. I think, ultimately, uh, I want to be in a situation where we can properly fund all of these important services. Mr. Colin Boyland. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Minister, has he done an assessment of the additional cost to the Department in relation to not cutting the grass verges earlier in the season or in August? I'm grateful to the, to the member, but uh, I think there is a, a, a fundamental uh, issue uh, within the, the current budget allocations, um, and that blockage is well known as a political blockage. And, and, and the member is a member of a party who are centre to that blockage in terms of um, uh, very necessary funds that, that, that could help and assist my department and other departments uh, as they confront the very serious uh, challenges that we have financially at this time. So. You know, I think, I, I, I think, as well as asking me uh, to look at, uh, at the situation, I think uh, uh, the member and his party need to look closely again at a situation which is costing this executive £2 million a week. Well, Mr. Sam Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. I would the Minister outline the Department's approach to Japanese nutweed or other invasive species? For his, uh, for his question, and, and uh, uh, members of the House will know that um, special efforts are required uh, to control both giant hogweed and Japanese nutweed uh, by poisoning. And in these instances, uh, Transport NI generally treats uh, invasive weeds such as Japanese nutweed uh, found growing in lands within its control using uh, chemical treatment. 
Uh, this is uh, generally done using specialist contractors, uh, following advice from the NIEA uh, as required. Thank you. Call Mr. Ross Hussey. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, the outcome of the 2015-16 budget leaves my department facing cuts and pressures of some £60 million on my resource budget, around 18% of the 2014-15 baseline. And whilst I have worked with my officials to try and absorb some of these pressures internally, the, the extent to which this uh, is possible is limited, without impacting on public safety and on core public services. Therefore, I have identified eight other resource non-ring-fenced bids totalling £39.8 million, and 13 capital bids um, totalling £141.1 million, which my department has now submitted to DFP. The main bids I have put forward in June monitoring are essential roads and street lighting maintenance activities, including uh, winter service, addressing the shortfall in the funding of NI Water to the level recommended by the utility regulator in their final determination, addressing the continuing uh, pressure on concessionary fares, and the delay in implementing the TransLink um, efficiency programme uh, to allow further consultation with the unions in an attempt to minimise the impact on services, and funding to support community and rural transport services. I have uh, also submitted a number 13, uh, in fact, of, thir of capital bids, including a bid of 104.4 million to meet the substantial shortfall in the current structural maintenance budget, which stands uh, at over 100 million pounds less than the independently recommended requirement. I have also included a bid of 15 million to address the shortfall in capital funding to NI Water required to bring them to the level of funding recommended by the utility regulator in the PC15 final determination. Mr Hussey for his supplementary. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his responses thus far. Would the Minister detail the transport NI component of the bid in more detail? I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member and, and uh, as I indicated in the uh, initial response. Uh, in previous response, uh, the brunt, unfortunately, has been borne uh, by Transport NI. Uh, the Transport NI resource budget represents a shortfall of some 38.5 million compared to the 2014-15 opening budget, and a further shortfall compared to the funding required for an optimum service. And as a result, uh, the budget is only sufficient to fund the street lighting and traffic signal energy requirements and associated electrical inspection and testing requirements. I have therefore agreed that Transport NI should undertake a skeleton roads maintenance service at risk until the bids can be made in June monitoring. Transport NI have, sub uh, have submitted resource bids totalling £23.4 million in the June monitoring round. Um, 14.8 million skeleton service for street lighting, road maintenance and winter service uh, to fund this service uh, for the at-risk period and the remainder of the year. 6.6 .6 roads maintenance minimum requirement uh, for traffic, for patching, for routine maintenance, including operations and maintenance division uh, on, on their overheads. And this uh, is in addition to the skeleton service bid and £2 million to cover street lighting for, uh, to restore normal service, inspection and testing, uh, repairs and maintenance to electrical and structural hazards. Again, this is in addition to the skeleton service bid. Mr. Jimmy Spratt. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, Minister, you referred to uh, Northern Ireland Water uh, and capital money uh, uh, for that uh, project. Can you advise if uh, the Duncrew Street uh, Northern Ireland Water Facility, which is at full capacity at this present minute in time uh, and in danger of not allowing any more development within the docks area, uh, is that on your mind to provide capital money for that? I'm grateful to the, uh, to, to the member um, for his supplementary question, and, and he will know that uh, there are uh, significant pressures on, on capital schemes uh, for uh, NI water to be carried forward. 
uh, and as well as the, the Dun crew, uh, one that he mentioned, there is the issue around um, Sicily Park and, uh, and other places. So um, we need to ensure that <coughs> proper, uh, re proper capital funding uh, and indeed resource funding uh, is made available to NI Water. Uh, otherwise, uh, we face considerable uh, infrastructure uh, uh, issues that are not in anybody's uh, interest. Um, the utility regulator has set out um, uh, the bare minimum uh, that, 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 that she wants and expects us to meet in terms of, of the services that we provide for both water and wastewater services. So it's important that, uh, that, that we address that. I have done as much as I can within the current financial limits open to me uh, to, to, to ensure that happens. There is still a shortfall. We are bidding, as I've indicated before, both capital and resource to uh, address the situation. And uh, it, it would be very helpful uh, for the member and his party to, to support those bids. Mr. Pat Ramsey. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And I welcome the Minister's response, particularly in terms of the street lighting. But I could ask specifically in reference to your bid for community transport. I think you would go a long way to acknowledge the contribution that disability action and community transport makes in the lives of disabled people and their families across Northern Ireland. Will the Minister also ensure that those aspects of disability action and disabled people's access are also a bid in this monitoring round? I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member for uh, his supplementary question, and I uh, understand and entirely agree uh, and, and want to pay a tribute to all of the providers in terms of uh, uh, community transport and, and, and rural transport services. Um, and they, they fulfil an important task, and they, this Assembly and this Executive and this Department uh, needs to ensure that they are properly and fairly funded. Uh, and uh, we've sought to do that. Um, and there are challenges there. We have made uh, a, a bid uh, to the June monitoring. But I have to say, I mean, and the, 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 the smoke signals that I'm getting uh, from, from the Department of Finance and Personnel and indeed around the executive table as to whether or not, first of all, we can agree a budget, let alone will there be any monies available for June monitoring. Uh, and, and frankly, I'm an old Mother Hubbard land here uh, and a lot of the services uh, were already providing service at risk, at financial risk, and we can see uh, the, the skeleton service that, uh, that is available. We are in a very our financial situation and it's time for uh, parties around the executive table and parties in this assembly to face political and financial reality and I have to say that also includes your own party. Uh, thank you Principal Deputy Speaker and, and like Mr Ramsay I also welcome the Minister's intention to bid for more provision for community and rural transport. Um, in his answer uh, to Mr Ramsay he alluded to challenges. Um, so, could he outline what these challenges are in respect of this particular group? Grateful to the member for, for her, um, her, her question. And, and basically, the challenges are it is one thing to bid for June monitoring funds, for additional funds. It is another thing to actually receive them. And that's, that's the challenge, that there is no guarantee. Simply, a bid doesn't do it uh, in of itself. It needs to be followed up. Uh, and, you know, um, Talks cheap, but it takes money to buy whiskey. Well, Mr. Kieran McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Question number three to the Minister. Uh, <clears throat> Northern Ireland Water's environmental compliance has steadily improved uh, over the last seven years. Uh, this has led NI Water achieving the best ever wastewater compliance in recent years of 98 per cent which can be attributed uh, to uh, significant investment in sewage uh, services and improvement to management and operation of the wastewater assets. The number of pollution um, incidents attributed to NI Water over this period has also declined significantly. The NI Water uh, business plan for the price control 15 period, which runs from 2015 to 2021, sets out the approach uh, for NI Water to continue to improve its compliance and meet the environmental obligations over the next six years. Uh, this approach is based on the DRD social and environmental guidance for water and sewage services, which I launched in 2014. NI Water will uh, strive to continue uh, to meet its environmental obligations over the next three years. However, 
Due to the reduced funding allocations received by my department, I am unable to fully fund the determination made by the utility regulator in relation to the levels of investment required in water and sewage uh, infrastructure for this financial year. And should this situation continue, this may adversely impact on NI Water's ability to build on its success uh, and improving on its performance. This is clearly an, uh, an area of concern, and I will continue uh, to bid for additional funding for NI Water through monitoring rounds. Well, Mr. McCarthy, for supplement. Thank the minister for his, uh, his answer. But will the minister accept that the, the start of, of, as I understand it, infraction um, proceedings regarding the uh, Ballycastle wastewater treatment works demonstrates uh, that uh, vital provision in this region is not being provided by your department, and it's a, an abject failure on the, the department in not providing that for Ballycastle? Well, <laughs> very easy for the. Uh, for the uh, member to say that um, it's an abject failure on behalf of, uh, of the department. Actually, it's not. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to update him now on uh, the current situation in terms of Ballycastle uh, wastewater treatments. And I've sort of got a sense from his question that he was hoping for infraction proceedings. I'm uh, actively working to make sure that we don't, uh, that we're not subject to infraction uh, uh, proceedings, and that includes uh, the Ballycastle uh, situation. Um, Ballycastle Wastewater Treatment Works is one of 17 sites throughout the UK which is the subject of infraction proceedings by the European Commission for failing to meet objection, uh, ob objectives uh, under the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive. It is the only one in Northern Ireland. Uh, meeting our, our European obligations is a key priority uh, in the social and environmental guidance, and the Commission expect, uh, expects these obligations to be met in a timely manner. And as a result, um, Ballycastle has been identified as a priority for NI Water. The timescale for completion of the upgrade, uh, subject to satisfactory completion of the procurement and construction processes, would be late 2017. This information has been uh, communicated to DEFRA uh, and the Commission, to the date, uh, and to date the proposed way forward has satisfied the Commission and no further action has been taken. Mr. Colum Eastwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I appreciate what the Minister says about uh, Ballycastle, but given the, 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 the current financial pressures and the impending uh, financial, further financial constraints, is the Minister confident that uh, we are not looking at potential uh, infraction proceedings on any, other, uh, mm -hmm. on any other sites across the North? Well, thank the member for his, uh, his question. Uh, uh, it will be um, incumbent on me to, to, uh, to protect uh, NI Water and indeed the department uh, against any, uh, any such proceedings. But again, we, we are down to the, to the issue of finance, and uh, we have got to ensure that the infrastructure, uh, that the, the, the work that needs to be done on the ground to upgrade. Uh, water and uh, sewage facilities is made available so that we can avoid any situation uh, anywhere in Northern Ireland where uh, there is a risk of infraction uh, proceedings taken against it. These things are taken seriously. They are taken seriously uh, in Europe, they are taken seriously by DEFRA and the UK, but they are also, let me assure you, taken seriously by myself and, and, and NI Water. Alex Easton. Number four, Mr. Deputy Principal Speaker. Uh, my, <coughs> my commitment to the Coal Rain to London Derry rail line has always uh, been clear, and I have worked hard to ensure that this line uh, has remained uh, open. Uh, the project uh, is a key programme for government commitment and is evidence of the Executive's determination to invest uh, in our rail network. It also signals our continuing commitment to invest in the North West and improve connections and frequency of service between Belfast and Londonderry. In November 2014, uh, I commissioned an independent review of the project following concerns that the original cost estimate for the scheme was significantly underestimated. The outcome of the review provided me with the insurance to press, to press on with the project. It did confirm that there might be limited interest, at, uh, interest in the signalling procurement due to the scale of railway investment being carried forward in Great Britain. TransLink has now awarded the 
contract to Babcock, uh, a company renowned for its engineering excellence. The overall cost at 46 million is higher than originally envisaged, but reflects the market we are competing in. The profile of expenditure on the Coleraine the London Dairy project is such that there will be no additional budget requirement uh, in this financial year. Uh, as you will be aware, budgets beyond 2015-16 have not yet been agreed. Uh, I will be prioritising this project in my capital planning for the next budget period to provide budget cover. For supplementary. Could I uh, thank the Minister for his answer? And, um, as the Minister knows, I'm fully supportive of, of what he's done here. Um, could I ask the Minister, um, this project is marked over two financial years, and he's given a commitment for the funding for the first year. Um, would he be able to give a commitment if funding is there that that will continue into the second financial year? Um, and there's also the possibility that it was, uh, could actually slip into a third financial year. So would he be able to give a commitment that uh, those two years will be covered? <laughs> Thank the member for his, uh, uh, his mild encouragement uh, and uh, appreciate that. Um, uh, the, look, this is not only a priority for my department and for TransLink, it's also uh, an executive commitment. Uh, I'm not sure where he got uh, the fact that it might slip into a third financial year. Uh, the, the works are, are due for completion. He will know, I think, from previous statements that I've made uh, for the end of next year. Uh, and, uh, and I very much anticipate that that target can and will be met. Um, so, uh, obviously, I've, I've said that whilst budgets are not set for next year, let alone this year, and let's not even go there uh, for this question, but um, I think uh, uh, it would be inconceivable to me that I would receive nothing. <laughs> now, I know I'm sometimes all over twist uh, and always looking more, but to receive nothing, I think, would be jolly unfair. Um, uh, and my expectation is that we will receive sufficient to ensure that uh, Coleraine London Dairy Phase 2 is completed and paid for. Uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, may I add my congratulations to the Minister and will he please tell the House that the six million additional is a mere drop in the ocean compared to the money that couldn't be spent on the A5 and was spent on the A8 and on the A2 and will he promise not to lose any sleep over this additional money that he has invested in our railways? <laughs> Grateful to the, to, to, to the member. Uh, the notion of me losing sleep, uh, I, I think, would, would, would not appeal to any member of this House, and, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and therefore I'm comforted by, by, by his remarks. I think, um, look, we've, we, we, there have been uh, issues around getting this uh, phase two underway, but we are now in a, in a, in a better position. We're moving forward. We'll have the, uh, the work uh, undertaken and begun and well started and continued and completed. Uh, hopefully in time and uh, in budget, and I think it will benefit hugely uh, the, the, the increasing numbers of people who want to use the, the rail service, not just between Coleraine and Londonderry, but between Belfast and Londonderry. And uh, we've seen remarkable, astonishing uh, figures uh, in relation to that, um, uh, an increase of 12% uh, uh, over uh, the past year. So we are doing the right thing. And we will continue to work at this until it is satisfactorily and properly and fully finished. Mr. Leslie Cree. Well, Deputy Speaker, someone once said that all politics is local. I wonder, can the Minister outline bus and rail investment in North Down? <laughs> Very grateful uh, to, the, uh, to, to, to the member uh, for his, uh, his question. And, uh, Lest anybody would think that that was a plant, but in, in, in the past two years, in the past two years, over 240,000 uh, has been spent, has been directly invested in the North Down uh, on bus and rail, uh, and this year some 1.5 million will be invested, including 1.1 million for Bangor Park and Ride. Uh, additionally, this year around 5.6 million will be invested in a number of other projects across the wider bus and rail programmes, which will benefit North Down and. I hope that the member draws comfort from that. Well, Mr. Stuart Dixon. That's number five, Principal Levy Speaker. <clears throat> My department uh, has a capital uh, allocation 
of uh, 328.3 million in 2015. Uh, it's um, some £70 million pounds less than projected in uh, expenditure in 2014-15. However, we are still taking forward uh, a substantial capital programme. I'm pleased to say that, uh, to inform the member that development work on York Street Interchange is progressing well. This important project will alleviate the existing bottleneck on the strategic road network, which affects the M1, West Link, M2 and M3. It will reduce congestion, improve the reliability of journey times and improve access to the regional gateways from the eastern seaboard corridor. Uh, a considerable amount of work is required to take uh, the scheme through the public inquiry process, scheduled uh, to start on the 10th of November 2015, and the necessary budget has been set aside in this financial year to complete uh, this task. This scheme um, has already received EU funding towards design development. Uh, I would be hopeful to be uh, uh, in being successful in attracting further EU funding for construction. I uh, continue to engage with EU officials to secure further funding for this and other important projects. Uh, if there were to be any cuts uh, to my capital budget uh, as a uh, consequence of the current austerity measures, I would of course have to review the capital programme, including the York Gate interchange. However, any decisions would be informed by the extent of budget reductions and a review of progress on schemes and capital commitments existing at that time. Mr. Dixon, for supplement. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker and Minister. Thank you for uh, your uh, answer so far, particularly in relation to an actual date for a public inquiry, uh, one at which I would certainly be supporting the project. With regards to the York Street interchange, one key element of it is the opportunity to provide duelling of the railway track across that section. But it is a once in a lifetime opportunity, as the consultants have advised, that it can only be done at the same time as construction of the roadworks. Will the Minister confirm that that is true and that he will use his best endeavours to ensure that the rail track is done at the same the work for the rail track is done at the same time as the road works? Well, grateful to the member for, for, for the point that he raises, and I uh, understand it entirely, and, uh, and it appears that from an engineering point of view uh, that that is the case. And clearly um, it, it, it would be sensible. Um, that two schemes could, uh, could run parallel to each other. I think the difficulty will be, and the challenge will be, and I say this to him directly, um, and not in any uh, aggressive way, but clearly uh, the financial implications of both uh, in terms of capital are substantial, and uh, you know, we would have to look at those issues and the issues of other capital projects, which have also been waiting some considerable time, and uh, members of the House will Will, uh, will be quick to raise particular capital projects that are of interest to them. I do understand the, points that he, uh, the point that he has raised, but I do, I do see challenges there, not least uh, in, in, uh, in, in bringing forward uh, uh, the, uh, uh, a scheme, um, a track scheme um, of that nature uh, in the immediate uh, period that we're facing. Mr. George Robbins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pr Principal Deputy Speaker. <clears throat> Could the Minister outline if budgetary allocations will affect the, the Corby's claiming lane project on the broad road between Corrine and Luma Valley, or Luma Valley and Corrine? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member, and can I, um, I suppose, join with other members of the House to congratulate him on, on, uh, on being a recent uh, recipient of the, of the honours system, and congratulations for that, and um, uh, enjoy the moment. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the scheme that, that, uh, that the member uh, speaks of, I, I am aware of, uh, as indeed there are what I would describe as a clutch of other schemes, similar improvements that would uh, give considerable benefit uh, to, um, uh, to areas and indeed communities. Um, uh, it was always my intention that, that, that we would somehow create um, uh, a pocket full of money to, to, uh, to carry out schemes of that nature that would um, even perhaps might even be useful to improve the reputation uh, of this assembly and this executive in terms of uh, what it was able to deliver. But the financial situations that we find ourselves in uh, are, are very constrained, um, and whilst that scheme uh, remains active on the books, we're not uh, able to indicate at this stage as to how quickly it will further develop. 
That ends the period for listed questions. We will now move to topical questions, and I call Mr. Marcino Mumer. Well, I got a, a, a free old ask, John Corlea. Uh, I wonder could I ask a minister? Minister, I know you're proud of your reputation as a bridge builder, but I want to bring it back to uh, the Finnehy Bridge, which is, uh, has, has managed to evade all efforts to improve it over recent years. And uh, could you give me an update on any plans to really improve what, what, is, a, what is an eyesore linking, north, linking west and south Belfast? I'm grateful to the, to, to the member, uh, and I will accept, as a, even as a backhanded compliment, uh, compliment um, uh, the reference to being a bridge builder. Um, the, uh, the, the member um, has raised this, uh, I think, through correspondence. Um, I'm not in a position, uh, because it's, uh, it, 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 it's not so much a topical question as a typical question, um, we, we'll, uh, we'll provide an update as quickly as possible uh, with, with the detail. Mr. for a supplement. Thank you, uh, Minister. And, and it is some years since we met on it, so perhaps we could uh, return to that discussion. Um, I know that there is a very ambitious plan to put a, a three million bridge over the, over the Lagan at Ormo, and we welcome that. Uh, but I believe that a £25,000 cosmetic exercise at Finnehy Bridge could really uh, solve what is a, a bridge which is more reminiscent of the 70s in Belfast, more reminiscent of a uh, redolent of the green zone in Iraq than it really should be of, of uh, the great city of Belfast. Well, I note uh, the member's comment, and, uh, and I do uh, also recall that um, the, the issue here is not so much the, uh, the structure or the soundness of the bridge, but its, it's uh, aesthetic value. Uh, now, I wish that I was in a position to, uh, to worry about aesthetic value in terms of the services that I provide. But, uh, but I will um, uh, engage with him, and uh, perhaps if we meet uh, to further discuss this issue. But um, tarting up bridges uh, is not such a priority as uh, maintaining bridges and, and ensuring that, uh, that their structure uh, is sound and remains safe. Mr. David Principal Deputy Speaker, and, uh, can the Minister give us any update on the A2 between Silverstream Banks and Sea Park, Carrick Fergus, or potentially when it may be even fully functional? I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member. Uh, I can confirm that work is progressing well uh, on the A2 uh, Shore Road scheme um, at Great Island. Uh, work on upgrading three and a half kilometres of single carriageway to dual uh, carriageway began in March 2013 and is programmed for completion in September uh, of this year um, along the online section of, of, of scheme between Jordanstown uh, uh, Road and Station Road. The new carriageway in the Carrick Fergus bound direction uh, has been substantially constructed and a contraflow traffic arrangement is currently in operation. The existing road uh, is now being uh, reconstructed to become the Belfast bound carriageway. This work is nearing completion, and later this month uh, traffic will revert to it, while the final surfacing is completed on the Carrick Fergus bound carriageway. Mr. Hildridge, for supplement. Good, Principal Deputy Speaker, and thank you for the Minister for, for the update. I think it, it should be acknowledged that, that the scheme has been managed very well uh, during the, the two years that, that it has been ongoing, with the, the disruption and upset to the vast majority of us, users being minimal. And I think tribute should be paid to all the, those involved. Has the scheme come in within budget, and are some of the minor issues regarding cyclists and bus lanes that have been sorted out as well? Grateful uh, to the member for his uh, positive comments in terms of the scheme, and indeed uh, I would want to uh, endorse them, and will certainly reflect them back to to uh, both my officials and, and consultants and uh, the contractors involved. Uh, there are always going to be uh, uh, ongoing issues uh, of, of finer detail, and, uh, and again, uh, uh, those charged on the ground with, with carrying forward this scheme would, would, would hope to continue to resolve those as easily and as practically as possible. Uh, and, uh, I think this, will, this is a scheme of huge benefit uh, to, to, to the East Antrim area uh, and that uh, uh, particular region. And I'm looking forward to seeing it uh, continued and, and, and finalised as quickly as possible. Mr. Conor Murphy. Uh, could the Minister advise us if he has a date as yet uh, for the publishing of the draft orders for the A5 dual carriageway? Grateful to the Member for his uh, 
question and welcome him back uh, to, to the House, uh, perhaps inadvisedly as a constituency colleague. But anyway, um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the update is that uh, I am currently um, processing and um, uh, the situation around the AF5 and the new statutory approvals which need to be issued. Uh, and I hope at some stage to be updating executive colleagues uh, on, on that situation. Uh, thank the Minister for his, his welcome. Uh, but he will be aware, obviously, that this is a project which has been uh, delayed, causing great uh, dismay in the North West region. Uh, in terms of appraising his executive colleagues, he has a number of weeks left between now and the summer recess, uh, and then the opportunity for that then will, will pass on towards the autumn. So, will he, be in a, uh, will he have an opportunity or will he be in a position? Uh, to bring this to executive colleagues this, same time, this side of the summer recess in order to progress this project as quickly as possible? I'm not uh, in a position to, uh, to confirm that uh, at this stage. We are still working through uh, some of the detail. Uh, I would say that uh, I could be uncharitable and say that some of the delay issues uh, were caused uh, while he was Minister of Regional Development, but, I, but I'll not do that. Um, uh, but we will uh, uh, continue to see what progress uh, can be made on, on the AF5 scheme. Well, Mr. Roy Bay. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. The Copeland Reservoirs and North Woodburn Reservoirs in Carrick Fergus have been lying empty uh, for most of this year. Is the Minister able to provide any update as to how the maintenance work is ongoing and when the reservoirs will come back into service? Well, I'm uh, grateful to the member for his, um, uh, his question. Uh, uh, NI Water actually have advised that there are seven reservoirs in, in the Carrick area uh, which are being refurbished as part of an ongoing routine maintenance programme over the past 18 to 20 months. Um, water levels have been lowered in the reservoirs to allow this work to progress. Uh, work on five uh, reservoirs have, uh, has been completed and work on the remaining two, that's Copeland and Lower South Woodburn, is due to be completed by the end of July, uh, after which they will be refilled. Again, uh, the rate of refill will depend on the weather. Thanks for supplementary. I thank the Minister for his answer. Um, June is thankfully predicted to be a, a relatively dry and summery month. And we don't know what lies ahead beyond that. But can the minister assure us that there are su sufficient stocks of water in the other reservoirs that would be available to serve the wider East Antrim area that uh, we should be able to carry us over the summer? Grateful to the member for his um, supplementary. And, and I can say that of the five reservoirs where, where work has been completed, uh, they are progressing uh, or pro progressively uh, refilling uh, naturally. Um, and of course, the, re the rate of refilling depends on, on weather and rainfall. And many things I can be uh, challenged about, but uh, to provide either additional rainfall uh, is probably not one of them. Um, but the same uh, principles will therefore apply uh, on, on, on the other two, on the remaining two, on Copeland and Lower South uh, Wood uh, Woodburn. And we hope that uh, that will um, deal with the situation. Mr. Paul Garvin. Minister, in relation to the grass cutting policy which has been adopted by the department, is there any indication that there will be a review of this current policy of only one uh, cut, which seems to be causing some concern? Well, I'm grateful to the member uh, for, for his question. Um, and, uh, the member will have heard me consistently say that this is not the service that I want to provide uh, as minister. Nor, I, I believe, is it the, 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 uh, the, the service that people expect. Uh, but I do have to say that um, uh, the, uh, the skeleton service that I have in place, which is at financial risk, even at this point, uh, is the maximum I can pr provide without further relief. And I do uh, appeal to him again to use his considerable political influence uh, with, uh, within his party and therefore on to the executive to ensure that either through June monitoring or through other sources, um, that this department can be properly and fully funded for the services, the important frontline services uh, that, it, that it undertakes. Mr. Garvin, for a supplement. 
thank the Minister for his answer. And I just uh, in relation to appreciate it's not, it's not additional contractors that have been brought in to undertake this work. This is uh, uh, service or staff from within the department. I'm wondering, has there been any laid off? Uh, or what are the duties that are being carried out by those who were trained to do such a function? Can I say to the member, um, uh, this is hugely frustrating for uh, staff uh, throughout uh, my department, both my officials and, and other staff. And I've taken the opportunity to meet with frontline uh, service staff, uh, I, uh, both uh, in the Armagh area and in the Antrim area, uh, close to, to, to him there, to hear at first hand their frustrations and the uh, impact on morale because these are these are highly dedicated and professional staff who want to carry out and provide the best possible service and the maximum service in terms of grass cutting and gully emptying and street lights and road defects and all of that and it is hugely frustrating for them to be found uh, in, uh, in a situation uh, there haven't been any layoffs at this point and obviously we would uh, that would be an absolute last resort. But uh, in the absence of, of affording uh, proper materials for, for staff to do their job, it does rather um, put them in a very difficult and challenging position. And, uh, and they, again, have to deal with the frustrations being expressed uh, by the general public, uh, as indeed, I think, uh, all constituency offices and advice centres and, and uh, uh, including my own offices in both Market Hill and Tandrigi, are subject to people raising legitimate concerns and complaints about uh, the lack uh, of maintenance on our roads and, uh, uh, and associated work. And I hope that that message can trickle through, uh, not only to this assembly, but to this executive, to get it to move on and to get to un unblock the financial issues and move forward uh, in a way that we can properly fund frontline services. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister um, to outline how the community transport networks were assessed for the funding they received for the services they provide? Can I uh, thank the member? And, and uh, the member has been very uh, assiduous in terms of, 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 of trying to, uh, uh, to, to raise uh, uh, concerns uh, on this issue. Um, and in, uh, I have to say that, in view, and I have outlined this. Um, in, in, in the recent past, in view of the severe budget outcome, uh, I was forced to reduce funding uh, in, in this area by some two million. I believe that uh, through continued efficiencies and use of all financial uh, resources available to it, providers should be able to minimise the impact on service users. I have bid for additional funding in June monitoring uh, to further mitigate the impact on services. These are not decisions that were either easy or soft options or in any way and we have sought to, to mitigate them as much as possible and we will continue to work with the groups that provide these important services to, to see if we can uh, further alleviate uh, the impact. Doug Dunn for a supplement. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, my understanding is, is that some networks have been mitigated more than others to the point that those who run a very efficient service have actually been told to tap into the reserves. Um, is it appropriate, um, that, or even the department's business, um, for them to look into the finances and the reserves of these networks? After all, you know that the group may have a 10-year-old whiskey, but the department shouldn't necessarily be pressuring them to drink it, particularly if there's not, not, not another bottle coming any time soon. I, I think the member's references is to the veiled one uh, earlier, which I said. Um, um, uh, about uh, taking money to buy whisky, and it does indeed. Um, at this stage, even watered whisky would be a help, uh, and uh, uh, that might be of some benefit. But let me say, my department's officials will continue to work uh, with uh, the groups and the transport providers who are out there uh, to try and manage the situation and to offset. Um, some of the impacts that, uh, that we are already aware of in terms of frontline services. And that's, that is the important thing. That it, is, it is ultimately the customer. And, and whether the use of reserves, and people will, will debate whether it is proper for reserves to be used in situations like this. Uh, will it 
um, reduce the negative impact that there will, will the use of reserves uh, reduce the, any negative impact that there is on people who use the service? If the answer to that is yes, and I think it is yes, and I believe it to be yes, then I think uh, we've got to stretch ourselves to do that. Time is up. We must now.